Now at five, the fate of the man accused of killing Delphi teens Abby Williams and Libby German in 2017 is now in the hands of the jury. Thanks for joining us here at five o'clock. I'm Nicole Griffin. Jurors heard the first testimony in the case against Richard Allen about three weeks ago. They deliberated just a short while this afternoon before breaking for the day. WRTV's Caitlin Kendall reports tonight from Delphi. After about two hours of deliberation, the jury has called it a night. They'll be back at 9 a.m. to continue deliberations in the case against Richard Allen. The jury will have to consider four counts, two counts of felony murder and two counts of murder. On the felony counts, they will have to find beyond a reasonable doubt that Richard Allen killed Abby and Libby while committing or attempting to commit kidnapping. Count three and four they will have to determine if Richard Allen knowingly or intentionally killed Abby and Libby. The burden is on the state and they must prove each element of the crime beyond a reasonable doubt. The jury was instructed that if they believe there is a possibility that Richard Allen is not guilty, they must give him the benefit of the doubt and find him not guilty. The jurors must all agree. The prosecution told the jury during closing arguments that if they would determine who Bridge Guy was, they know who killed Abby and Libby. They said that Bridge Guy is Richard Allen. The defense closed by saying this case is really about four things, a broken timeline, bumbling ballistics, false confessions, and digital forensics. They reiterated to the jury, there's no DNA, fingerprints, digital data, forensics evidence, or trace materials connecting Richard Allen to the crime or to Abby and Libby. They say all of those things make it virtually impossible for Richard Allen to have committed this crime. They asked the jury to set Richard Allen free and enter a verdict of not guilty. The jury will now have to decide Richard Allen's fate. They'll reconvene tomorrow morning starting at 9 a.m. and they'll deliberate until 4 p.m. unless they tell the bailiff they need to go longer. They will deliberate on Saturdays if it's needed. They won't on Sundays. WRTV will be there every step of the way on Verdict Watch to bring you the very latest both on air and online at WRTV.com. Reporting in Carroll County. Caitlin Kendall, WRTV. Caitlin, thank you. Now joining us now to provide some legal insight into this case and what's happening now is Courtney Benson Coy, a criminal defense attorney for SU Law here in Indianapolis. We heard Caitlin mention they were only out the jury for just a couple hours once they got the case today. What does that tell you about where the jury might stand? It tells me that they're tired, right? They've heard a lot of argument today. They've heard a lot of evidence over the past 17 days. And it tells me that they want some rest and they want to come back fresh in the morning and start deliberating again. And you and I were speaking about the jury being sequestered. That's not always the case for juries. What impact does that have in this case? The impact it has is they've been together a lot more than most juries have been together. And they're able to, they've been able to talk about the case leading up to today. Mm -hmm. So it might actually su surprise people how short the deliberation is just because they have had that additional time to be together as a jury. Mm -hmm. People often get caught up on DNA and in this case we've heard there's no DNA connecting Richard Allen, but there was the unspent bullet at the scene. Um, the defense has had a lot of circle or the prosecution has had a lot of circumstantial evidence. What does the state really need to prove in order to say Richard Allen did this? The state has the burden to prove this beyond a reasonable doubt. And when you have circumstantial evidence, that burden is even more important. And it is a strict and heavy burden and the state has a lot to prove to get there, I think. And when you talk about that term, that's a term we often hear. What does that really mean for our viewers who may not understand? Right. It, it's not a 50-50. It's not maybe, maybe, maybe not. It, I mean, it is you have to be sure beyond not all doubt, but but up to that point. Based on your experience, this trial has gone for 18 days now. What are you anticipating as far as how long the jury might be out? It's so hard to tell how long a jury is going to be out um, because again, they have been sequestered. We don't know what they've been able to talk about or what they have been talking about up until this point. Um, that is all private between the jury. So it is so difficult to tell. There's really no way to tell. All right, Courtney Benson Coy in studio live with us tonight. We appreciate your insight. Thank you so much for being here. You'll be back with us at six o'clock.